Tonight, Leonardo DiCaprio through the decades. Now you have my attention. Only E.T.'s been there since his showbiz start. I did my first television commercial when I was 13. From his Hollywood growing pains. This is TV, big show. To his Titanic-sized stardom. King of the world, um, never live that one down. For the first time, never before seen interviews. He's great. Behind the scenes of his 31 films, Leo on roles he turned down and the one that finally got him his Oscar. I think people are gonna be talking about that sequence for a while. Plus, why despite having a list of high profile romances, he's only gone red carpet official twice. I have a girlfriend right now. Entertainment Tonight presents E.T. Vault Unlocked Leonardo DiCaprio. You can't exactly put that on the, the title for E.T., can you? Leonardo DiCaprio, this is your life. Welcome to Entertainment Tonight. And this is why the E.T. Vault is the gift. It just keeps on giving. Yes, it does, because no show has been with him from the jump like E.T. And now we are unlocking all of Leo's Hollywood eras. I feel extremely lucky every day, and I feel like I hit the lottery, and I, I, don't, I don't take it for granted. I'm the king of the world! Oscar winner, activist. It's important for people to give back. King of Charisma. You have the most beautiful eyes I have ever seen. Leo, always chatty with E.T., has watched his movies gross over $6 billion at the box office. I feel lucky is what I feel. As for awards, Leonardo DiCaprio. The global heartthrob finally won Oscar gold for The Revenant after losing five times before. He also snagged a SAG award and a globe for the role. This was a hard movie to finance, it was a hard movie to make. Leonardo DiCaprio. That was Leo's third globe after The Wolf of Wall Street. I'm not used to this type of thing, to tell you the truth. And The Aviator. How late will you party when it's, it's yours to celebrate? I don't know. I, I, I'm, I haven't eaten a single thing all day. I have a pulsating headache right now because this is the most surreal, weird experience I've ever had in my life. DiCaprio's co-stars. I got to work with some incredible actors all around. Hollywood's best, Jack Nicholson, Robert De Niro, Meryl Streep, Tom Hanks, and of course, Kate Winslet. I've got you, I won't let go. And Leo's not letting go of his number one collaborator, director Martin Scorsese. We do have similar tastes. The duo has made six movies together, most recently, Killers of the Flower Moon. He has range and he keeps growing. Leo's other passion? Word on the street has always been, Leo, that you were a bit of a hip hop head, and we saw that at your party. <laughs> I have a range of musical love that goes back to our stuff from the 20s, 30s, and 40s, <laughs> yeah. with, with jazz and blues. And then hip hop, too. Fans got a glimpse of Leo's rapping skills in this TMZ video, but for years, we've watched him be an advocate for the planet. Did you come here in a Prius tonight? Yes, I did. Leo produced the solution-focused doc, The 11th Hour, and also to raise climate change awareness, he starred in 2021's Don't Look Up. Climate change is compromising the very livability of our planet. It's not only about, you know, practicing this in your everyday life, but it's about voting properly. And while we always knew Leo was destined to be a superstar, at age 18, he told E.T. this. The whole Hollywood scene isn't exactly my thing. I don't like uh, to schmooze and all that. Born in 1974 in Hollywood, Leo was surrounded by the entertainment industry. My earliest memories were of wanting to be an actor. I was in such close proximity to be able to go on auditions after school. Early on in his career, an agent told Leo to change his name to Lenny Williams. Why? Leonardo DiCaprio apparently sounded too ethnic. He declined and got his first acting credit in 1979, appearing in an episode of Romper Room. He would go on to do plenty of commercials. I did my first television commercial when I was 13 years old, and I got, I got my SAG card. Very proud day. He was equally proud to land a gig on The New Lassie. His paycheck? $414 a day. After that, Leo appeared on TV hits like Roseanne, Parenthood, and... I almost got the ones without the happy hog, but they were kind of stuffy. <laughs> his breakout role on Growing Pains. I mean, big show, big people, big... They've been with each other for so long. You know, I didn't know how they'd feel about me coming in, but they were really nice about it. While on that show, Leo got his first big feature film break in This Boy's Life, starring opposite Robert De Niro. So how big is this turkey gonna be? Thank God I can move on to something like this now and be respected as an actor and not, not have been set in that, as the public's mind frame, as a series actor or a teen idol or anything like that because it's not something I want to be. 
Gilbert or Gilbert? Because I'm Gilbert. His next movie was with another big star, Johnny Depp, in What's Eating Gilbert Grape. It earned Leo his very first Oscar nod. And while Leo lost out, he was kind of relieved. I remember being really paranoid about ever having to go up in front of a billion people. I just don't want to go up there. That's what I remember. It's my boy. Daddy, right? it's my boy, right? In 1994, E.T. was with the actor, his co-star Mark Wahlberg, and his mom, Irma Lynn, on the New York set of Basketball Diaries. He's great. He's cooler. I'm just going to enjoy it while it lasts, because it may not last forever. That year, Leo also filmed The Quick and the Dead and showed E.T. his gunslinging skills. A lot of different things that you could do with this thing. But as for the future Playboy skills as a heartthrob, cue Leo's 1996 hit Romeo and Juliet. E.T. caught him on set kissing Claire Danes and trying not to crack up. God. Romeo and Juliet, there's a heck of a lot of kissing. I mean, he's actually amazing at what he does. She's a ball of emotion, a powerhouse, as I like to put it. Their red-hot romance movie rocketed to number one, grossing $147 million. It only cost $14.5 million to make. When a movie actually of yours hits number one, it's a different thing, you know? People come out of the woodwork, you know, that you wouldn't have expected calling you to do movies for them. But it was 1997's Titanic that cemented Leo's leading man status. I'm the king of the world! <laughs> king of the world, um, <laughs> that's the term. Yeah. Never live that one up down. This film is going to be one that they're going to like hold for future generations because it's, it's truly an epic in every sense of the word. It's a dope movie for sure. Leo was just 21 when he landed the role of Jack Dawson after Johnny Depp turned it down. Director James Cameron says Leo almost passed on it too. I've always had a prejudice against doing like a big budget monster film like that. If it wasn't um, a big budget film, I probably would have done it anyway because the love story is so great. Whew. It's been rough. Hats off to all those action guys because it's, it's hard stuff, harder than I ever imagined. I'm up, up on like this tilting poop deck that's up in hydraulics. I'm like 300 feet in the air looking down at like thousands of people falling below me. You have to take a moment out and say, how the hell did I get to this place in my life? But the hard work paid off. Titanic was number one at the box office for a record 15 consecutive weeks. And it's made over $2 billion. I sat next to the prince, hung out with him, we chilled. What did you guys talk about? Oh, he just wanted to know about the different stunts. It reminded him of how it was in the Navy, he said. You didn't come as a couple tonight, did you? Yeah, we came together. We're good buddies. Absolutely, just yeah. friends. But thanks in part to his undeniable chemistry with Kate, the movie became a pop culture phenomenon, and Leo Mania was born. You got chased through the loop. It was like whizzing by the Mona Lisa at 15 <laughs> miles an hour. The truth of the matter is I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm very lucky. And any time I hear myself complaining about anything having to do with my life, I, I, make, my, I make myself nauseous. <laughs> Leo followed up Titanic playing twins. E.T. was on the French set of The Man in the Iron Mask. It's it actually good, quite comfortable it? after a while. You get used to it. But the most horrible thing was the fact that, I mean, I got itches on my face. But the uh, Chewbacca <laughs> setup is a little difficult. Leo was on double duty again in 2002 as an Irish ex-con in Gangs of New York and a teenage con artist in Catch Me If You Can. Please, I mean, it's my midterm next week and my books were stolen. Ironically, in this movie, I'm 28 years old, and I'm 12 years the senior of the actual character that I'm playing, who's 16 years old. He's not including his regular guys. Leo does his homework when it comes to changing his voice. He did a Boston accent in The Departed. Every weekend, Sergeant. It was just a matter of being able to hang out with some people from Boston. A southern drawl in Django Unchained. Roscoe, a beer for the man with the beard. And a South African accent in Blood Diamond. We fought and died together, you know? You know, I went there a month early just to sort of hang out with the locals and let them get drunk and tell me their stories. Leo's transformations taking on real life roles have earned him critical acclaim. This is incredible. He won a Golden Globe and was nominated for an Oscar for his portrayal of eccentric billionaire Howard Hughes. Not only did he star in The Aviator, he produced this eight year passion project. He told us it took one week to shoot that nude scene. 
You get to know the crew and you feel comfortable in your birthday suit after a while. But he'd never got comfortable wearing false teeth, a bald cap, and colored contacts to become J. Edgar Hoover. It became incredibly uh, claustrophobic after a while. At least there were over 50, 50 different intricate little pieces that they glued on every day. It was a six hour process. Fast forward two years to 2013, Leo brought a literary icon to life in The Great Gatsby. I'm Gatsby. That same year, he showed us his wild side and dance moves as financial criminal Jordan Belfort in The Wolf of Wall Street. And it was just this sort of hedonistic atmosphere on set. But you felt like, you know, you were a rock star. You'd be relentless! <laughs> From Wall Street to the wild, Leo battled a bear and finally won an Oscar for The Revenant. And if you were wondering, yes, that gnarly beard was real. I had that beard for a year and a half. I'm just proud that we have a great piece of art to show for it. Could Jack have fit on that door at the end? Oh <laughs> my gosh, I thought it. I remember bawling my eyes out when I was I have no girl. comment. Le Le <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No comment. <laughs> uh-huh, that's all the comment we need. And that wouldn't be the last time it was brought up either, because when Brad and Leo finally teamed up, a big screen bromance was born. You buy a house in town, you don't rent. Eddie O'Brien taught me that. This is a rare sort of occurrence. It really came naturally. But Brad and I, as soon as we step into these shoes, it was one of the more easy sort of natural fits that I think I've ever experienced. He's a good egg, and I'm really happy the restraining order was lifted off of me, and so we were able to work again. He throws one of the best tantrums ever laid down on film. You're sitting there like a both Brad and Leo received critical acclaim for their performances, but Brad was always quick to give props to his co-star. And the Oscar goes to Brad Pitt. Leo, I'll ride on your coattails any day, man. And the Golden Globe goes to Brad Pitt. I wouldn't be here without you, man. I thank you. Still, I would have shared the raft. Never let go. Of course, that was a playful dig at Leo's Titanic co-star and his number one work wife, Kate Winslet. We, we just like each other as, as people. We were really bosom buddies. I'd yes. work with him again like that. Kate would get her wish 11 years later in Revolutionary Road. We definitely aggressively look to work together again. We're very lucky, uh, you know, we've never had a fight. To me, she's the greatest actress of her generation. He is the best actor of his generation. And here we are, a whole generation later, and look at him, look at him. For me to get married now would take a lot. To feel. Marriage would, wouldn't be uh, in, in even my realm, but you know. Yeah, not much has changed for Little Romeo nearly 30 years after that interview, because when it comes to being a perpetual Hollywood bachelor, Leo is a model citizen. You're I'm different. just a little jerk. Yeah. <laughs> you a romantic guy? Um, yeah, I'd say so, you know. When I'm alone with a girl, I'm, you know, I'm doing the baby voices, the whole thing, all that ridiculous stuff. You know, I have a girlfriend right now, and, uh, I'm pretty nice to her, I have to say. That girlfriend? Then 22-year-old model Kristen Zhang. The two were hand-in-hand hand at the 1996 Romeo and Juliet premiere. Dude, the, does this look good on him? Looks wonderful. Leo was also linked to supermodels like Naomi Campbell and Helena Christensen. In 2000, he told us he wasn't looking for anything serious. I'm happy on my own right now. I like it. But that all changed later that year when he met the then 20-year-old model Giselle Bündchen. I'm absolutely happy, and you know Your why? Because my life is balanced. The two dated for five years, and many thought Giselle was the one when Leo brought her to the 2005 Oscars along with his mom. Did you bring Giselle? Yeah, we came, and uh, I got him away from all this, got her away from all this madness. They broke up later that year. Then he began a new romance with 20-year-old Israeli model Bar Raffaele. Could you ever imagine having a high-profile wedding? Ooh, I don't know. I don't even know <laughs> a high-profile wedding. I'm still not married right now. Their on-again, off-again relationship spanned six years, coming to an end for good in 2011 when she was 25 and Leo was 36. 
and 25 years old seems to be Leo's go-to breakup marker. It is kind of insane sometimes. Leo's 2017 romance with Nina Agdahl and his most recent long-term relationship with Daisy Jones and the Sixes Camilla Marone also came to an end when they hit 25, though earlier this year he was linked to Gigi Hadid, who was 27. In 2020, Golden Globe host Ricky Gervais publicly roasted Leo for his dating habits. Once upon a time in Hollywood, nearly three hours long, Leonardo DiCaprio attended the premiere, and by the end, his date was too old for him. So... While Leo's dated a bevy of beauties, he's only made it red carpet official with two girlfriends. His parents, Irma Lynn and George, are often his plus one to big events. Who's your date tonight? Oh, my mother. My mom's running around having fun somewhere, doing something. I got to bring my dad tonight, which is awesome. The Oscar winner credits his parents for his success. They supported his decision to drop out of high school to pursue an acting career. Over the years, E.T. has talked to Leo about his family's unwavering love and encouragement. One of the things that my dad said to me very early on is my only wish for you is to, to have an interesting life that, you, that fulfills you. We didn't have much, but I had parents that said, look, our, our son wants to do this, this is his dream, and they drove me every day to auditions, and they supported me. They're special people. Special people he's willing to share the spotlight with? His mom and grandma both made quick cameos in The Beach. I've tried to get uh, my mom in uh, every movie that I've done. Also in Leo's inner circle, Tobey Maguire, Lucas Haas, Kevin Connolly, and David Blaine, the reported self-proclaimed wolf pack. I have a good, solid group of friends that I've known for a long time that, you know, I trust with my life. The guys became fast friends in the 90s after running into each other at auditions. In 2013, Leo shared the screen with his closest pal, Toby in The Great Gatsby. Action. It was great working with Leo. We've been friends for almost 25 years. To be able to have a partnership and a friend like Toby to enter into this world with, who's always gonna have my best intentions at heart and vice versa, somebody who I can always be honest with was a huge benefit. Having a retrospective of your life seems a little bit weird to me, but when you do that, you have to be honest about it. Well, mission accomplished then. But believe it or not, there are even more layers to Leo. Here's some things that you may not know. Has George Lucas approached you about playing Anakin Skywalker? Um, approached, keyword. I, don't, I, I, you know, we've talked about it. You know, I'd consider it, yeah. Leo turned down doing Attack of the Clones. The role went to Hayden Christensen. Another gig he said no to? Hosting SNL, but he did do a cameo. Am I flying, Jack? Yes, Rose. Yes, you're flying. And did you know Leo is a member of the Beehive? Love up in the air. There he is at the Renaissance Tour in LA on Bee's birthday. And here he is in London at another show back in May. But Leo's all time fave. Beatles fanatic, so I've listened to every album on loop. They're the greatest band ever. Get back, George.